Hello people, welcome to uh, this video um, where I'm going to be talking about mental illness and um, how it uh, is presented and how it affects violence and violent behavior. Um, because, well, I did make the video on the Orlando shooting asking you guys what you thought uh, was the cause for it. And um, those of you that are saying we should be remembering the victims and and that those are who we should be focusing on. I, I, I see where you're coming from, but I'm going to have to disagree with you, because you couldn't have stopped that shooting by talking to any of the victims. Um, there was nothing they could do. They were just there. And something did make this guy go out. Well, not see, that's the thing. It's not that simple, because it's rarely one thing. Um, this particular mass shooter was cited as being bipolar, uh, popularly because his wife said that she thought he might have been that that was that was the source um which first of all that strikes me as kind of strange but it's a general theme that i've seen with a lot of these shootings is that somewhere in there they have to say that oh well he was probably unstable in some way and it's true that some of them were um others not so much there can have been other factors and Violence in and of itself is not a mentally ill behavior. Um, look at children. Look at the children. Children will fight each other readily. Humans, humans are animals, and our society has been quite a violent one until, well, the last probably a hundred years or so. So, yeah, violence in and of itself and violence, violent tendencies, are not somehow unnatural or an illness. That is something that humans have uh, whether we act on them on them or not that's a different issue entirely um so uh, most of the articles that i've found that deal with this stuff um i can't find many but i, I can find some that uh criticize how mental illness is presented um one of my favorite videos which i'm going to be linking below along with uh, all my sources is a, a sketch or clip sketch thing by John Oliver who talks about for mostly the American perspective of it where you have 90% um, of the mental health care treatment that is being um, administered in the United States are administered by prisons and that's probably not ideal um, but mental illness in and of itself does not make you statistically more likely to be violent. It makes you less likely to be violent. But that's looking at mental illness as a whole. The uh, disorders that are often cited as causing violence are um, mood disorders, such as bipolar and antisocial personality disorder, and schizophrenia, which is the one that I'm diagnosed with. And um, I looked at some statistics, and there's been a lot of studies done on this, and they aren't all because they, they don't all agree. There's a lot of different factors at play. For example, um, uh, studies with uh, that, that adjusted for, like I had a general, uh, no, they had a control. Uh, control studies cited 5.1% uh, rates of violence for uh, the one that they did for schizophrenics, whereas 8.5% uh, rate of violence amongst the schizophrenics. Um, then for bipolar, you have 3.4% uh, for the control and 4.9% for those with the disorder. See, that's the difference between the controls is larger than the difference between <laughs> the control and the illness. Or and it's not larger; it's slightly smaller, but it's similar. And um, yeah, so that in and of itself. It's just enough to be statistically relevant, but it's it doesn't quite explain it. Now, if you add something else to to uh, to the mix, like uh, substance abuse, that is a, a large aggravator for schizophrenia and bipolar. The percent the rates of violence went up to twenty seven point six and twenty one point three percent respectively. But then there was another study done. Uh, on schizophrenia specifically, which instead of doing like a like a, a broad 
selection of the community uh, for their controls, what they did was they controlled with unaffected siblings and people with schizophrenia, and they found no difference in the rates of violence, none. Um, so, I, to me, that seems to suggest that other factors might be at work here, uh, specifically social ones, like how you're raised, how you grew up, what you grew up around. That 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 seems to play a huge part. Then um, the single largest the single largest uh, risk factor to determine violent behavior is a history of violence. So you've been around violence, or you've committed it yourself. You had it had it done to you. Then yes, you are more likely to be violent, more likely than anyone else, um, statistically. So uh, yeah, there's that. It's it's something that people can start doing if they if it happens to them or if it if they grew up around it. Um. So yeah. Uh, let's see. I have some notes here. One moment. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna cut this, but uh, da, 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 da. yeah. What uh, has what people are starting to do in in the mental health care community is that they're starting to do something called dangerousness standards, because they've had a lot of criticism regarding not being able to predict this behavior from a lot of these people who are uh, committing it. So their dangerous standards that they're implementing are an attempt to um, to quell violent behavior before it. Uh, becomes violence, and uh, they've had. If if you ask from my personal experience, when I was in the hospital, they definitely had that because I was in an open ward, which means that people who were considered dangerous to themselves or others were not in there, and the doors were unlocked and whatnot. Um, if if someone did act out or uh, couldn't control themselves, it's like if, if five minutes and they're on an ambulance heading to a closed ward with a shot of Suprexa in their ass. It's, they, they were, but it happened, I was there for an entire year and it happened maybe two or three times while I was there. So they must be pretty decent at determining it by now, at least when they're trying. Um, but the thing is, they're not looking at the diagnosis of the patient. Well, not mainly when um, trying to determine whether he is violent or not, because it's not effective. What you have to look at is the patient's history, and yeah, a bunch of different things: substance abuse, uh, history of violence, uh, social upbringing, all that stuff. Um, nobody just picks up a gun and heads out and shoots someone. Nobody just snaps without there being any sort of stressor to snap them. It it doesn't happen like that. What I can believe is that mental illness uh, can act as uh, uh, can act as a catalyst, which can make some some stressors that would usually be bearable to someone unbearable to the point where they uh, uh, act out in in that way. I would I would uh, think uh, think back to people like the Columbine shooters for things like that, but. Then again, I'm not. I'm not sure they were mentally ill. I. I really. I really am not. They might have had some. Some issues with. With depression, but I think alienation was a much bigger thing there. They. It wasn't like they despised humans at large. They. They had each other. But they. They. I. I suppose they. Sort of found some sort of community amongst themselves those those two guys and yeah it, it just evolved into well basically what was for them a two pe two person subculture of of hating everything um and i don't think that's mental illness i i think i think that's human behavior and i think that could have been stopped if there had been someone there to um to help them or be there for them or listen to them you know, and then not that, and that's what that's what's really sad about these things because what you find when you look at these shooters aren't usually um, aren't usually 
evil people. What you find are tragic figures. Um, tragic figures who became monsters because they, I suppose, didn't see another way out. Um, and personally, I believe there's always another way out. You know, I, I want to live in the forest. I mean, who the fuck's stopping you? I lived in a tent. No. Uh, but and that's that's what if if you talk to some homeless people you'll find out that that's often what what they did is that they couldn't deal with it anymore so they just moved away from everything but i suppose some people don't feel like they have that option or haven't thought about it or i, I don't know but yeah i'm i'm doing a lot of theorizing right now my point is i i uh, i think that mental illness can be a stressor it can be uh, an aggravating factor. But seeing as the statistical significance disappears, at least for schizophrenia, when you use unaffected siblings as controls, I would see... To me, it seems that it, it's fair to say that violence illness cannot be cited as a reason. Or mental illness cannot be cited as a reason for uh, violence in these cases. The the ones that are violent that I've seen have been completely, you know, gone to the point where you wouldn't be able to talk to them. They're scared. That's why they're violent. It's because they don't know what's going on. They have paranoia and they feel like they're being attacked, um, which I can, <laughs> it's, it's only, it, since the guys are trying to stick drugs in their ass, it's, I, I can kind of see, you know, why someone who is very confused and doesn't know what's going on might act out in that way. And they, you know, count as violent as well. Uh, but there were some Canadian studies that actually found that um, what staff sees in in the context of a mental hospital is usually the people who are far more violent than they would otherwise be. Because that's often how they end up in the mental hospital. Um, there's also many people who go, no, I, I, I'm diver, diverging now, but I think I said what I wanted to say, and I'm going to link the studies down below, and I'm going to link that John Oliver thing as well, because I think it's great, even though he also kind of does uh, the political gun control spin, which I, I dislike, because I would like it to be, well, if, if you think that the guns are the actual issue, I would... Yeah, but obviously they're just part of it. Because like I said, you just don't pick up a weapon and shoot someone. It's, it's, or, or, it's, then crazy people don't do that either. If you're far enough gone that you're just going to start shooting people, then you are too far gone to plan it as well. At least that's how uh, I see it. If if you can if you can plan it out in detail, it's not a mental illness. It's it, well, again, it's a fucking gray area. This isn't it. Um, it started out really good this video, and then I just went off on tangents. Uh, anyway, let me know what you think. And um, these these studies are quite extensive, and I'm I'm not a hundred percent up to date on every one of them. I'm still reading through more. I would love to hear what you guys think, and if you, any of you have uh, have some some sources you would like to link me, then I'd like to see him. And um, yeah, hope you're well and have a good one.